Hey guys, DJ the Guildmaster. So, uh, this video I'm doing right now is how to paint U.S. Airborne down and dirty. Now, the models I'll be using are D-Day models, the pewter ones. As you can see, I actually have some D-Day stuff going on. Uh, the one company, I was get into it before we get started. Um, so if you're looking for like aircraft tokens and stuff, oh, that's pretty. Uh, these guys, easy model. Um, I am using their P-47 uh, collection, P-47D Thunderbolt for, in my U.S. Airborne, I have an air traffic controller, an airstrike officer. And I know people are already going cringe, saying, oh, well, you know, airstrikes suck. And they have nerfed them, I will admit that, but the fact Americans get two airstrikes, I'm going to try to use it. Today I played a practice game with my buddy Paul, and uh, at one point... I strafed my own units and another point I strafed and caused enough damage on one side with pins I believe it or not pins to turn the flank so uh, the model itself looks like this and it's a pretty good looking model you know what I mean like looks really good uh, it comes with the landing gear down so what I have done I've taken the landing gear apart taken them off and I've actually been able to fold all the stuff back in on itself. The tail, you can't really tell because I painted it, actually sanded it, painted it. These, I'm getting ready to paint the evasion stripes on the landing gear, which I know will be a little bit different. And people have already said, my buddy, they'll never see it when it's on the table. And you're right, but for me, uh, the model will end up, comes with a little mount. Uh, it looks like this. So... For bolt action, they tell you use an aircraft or a token. I'm using my aircraft. and I'll be measuring center from the canopy, 18 inches, and then the 6 inches from it. So if you're near the wingtip, uh, pretty much, you're going to be getting hit with uh, the aircraft. But it looks pretty good. I mean, like, since I'm doing, like, D-Day Airborne. I figured I'd show you that because it's on my workbench and working on it. Like I said, I'll be playing tomorrow. So you might see this in a video. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to paint the evasion stripes on it tonight. Uh, since I work night shift, I have plenty of time. So, enough of my tangent. So, we're painting airborne. So, what I have done, I have taken the guys and I have primed them with olive drab uh, spray paint uh, from Army Builder. And I'll be honest, or not Army Builder, but like another manufacturer. And it came out really dark. So, uh, unfortunately, so when I spray painted them, they came out really dark, as you can kind of see. It, it, it looks lighter in this video because I have a, a lot of light coming through a light filter. But what I've done, first thing you're going to need, once you put them all together, these are pewter, I spray painted them all of draft. And then I went back through with Vallejo US Olive Drab model color. Uh, this is number 70. Dot eight eight seven U.S. Verdant Olive, it's U.S. Olive Drav. I use that to fill in any uh, shadowing because I use a rattle can. Uh, I'm getting ready to start using a airbrush, so we'll see how that works. Let me know like is there still a shadowing issue, or since you can hold the model in spray paint, if it works better. So I've retouched everything up, then I've gone through with Earthshed. Uh, very talent in a, a bottle. So, Earth Argrax or Shade, the GW stuff, the, the wash. So, I washed all the models, then I went back through and I air or dry brushed everybody. So, that's the first step for painting these guys. Uh, I'm gonna go through all the colors I'm gonna use today or through this video. It's gonna be a quick video. So, that's the first step spray, put everyone together, cleaned them up, spray painted them went and washed them now dry brush now we're going to go through and the next color we're going to paint on these guys honestly to get them going uh we're probably going to end up painting their boots and any holsters so we're going to paint those with um this is a team yankee paint but it's woodland browned it's vallejo 383 i like this because it's still brown but it's a lighter brown uh the american uniforms 
had very little leather work really if you had leather it was like pouches such as like a pistol pouch or your boots where like other countries had a lot of leather stuff a lot of the American stuff was canvas or khaki so we're going to use this straight watch straight this up you just need a little bit and uh what we're going to do like i said this is almost out so i might need to get a bottle here soon so that's you're using that for the leather on these guys and I'm going to use a uh, medium layer brush Citadel. I got these on sale because like these are expensive brushes. I usually honestly use, and I have good results, uh, and, and they're not a sponsor. I use uh, the D&D brushes. It comes in a set. Like I said, it's, it's $12 for a detail brush, a layer brush, and a uh, dry brush. And like... I still have a whole bunch of the D&D &D brushes here as you can see in this set like I like this dry brush it's set up so and I got some tops of grass here for other stuff but we're going to use this as the main brush come my paint pot and just uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint these real quick and then I'll paint the leather and then we'll go into the next part which will be khaki so you'll just be a little speed montage of me painting this stuff It's a montage. It's a montage. So when I paint these, if I paint the heels, I'm going to use, uh, for those, I am actually going to use black gray. This is number 70.862, and this is like, it's black with a tinge of gray, so it's almost like if you highlighted it. It's great for anything that looks like rubber, like tires especially, hoses, stuff that like just has that like looks like rubber just a rubbery feel these are as i use this all extensively for tires especially for team yankee and bolt action i'll use this for the bottom of the heels because once you wash it it also like kind of like it does something to the color makes it a little bit darker it's a montage montage okay uh, i got most of these guys painted up okay so you just need to, if you need to do two thin coats, you definitely can. You're just painting a brown. The other thing you're painting, the brown, the light brown, is pistol holsters. Okay, those are what was leather. Uh, you can still kind of work on a model. Uh, two thin coats, like I said. Uh, the next thing we're going to go ahead and paint on these guys is or our next color is going to be khaki so this is going to be 70 uh, 988 as you can see I use a lot, a lot of model color Vallejo stuff this is the khaki a lot of the US web gear was khaki and it's like it's great this uh, kind of tan color what's kind of nice is because of like the theaters of operation and how like some khakis are more green or some uh, web gear is more greenish or more washed out. I like using this because like for one it says that's what the proper color is and whenever you weather or wash this it really changes the depth of the color. So let's shake this up, put a couple drops out and what's on honestly the major, the, the main two colors on these models uh, are going to be this khaki and olive drab. So it's cool with the khaki if you look on these guys there's a ton of stuff on top of the helmets, see this thing focuses, all like the extra uh, webbing stuff, that's going to be khaki. His pouches, his magazine belts, everything is going to be khaki. The the e-tool, uh, the trenching tool cover, that's all khaki. So we're going to paint all that. The other thing that there's a lot of, if you see on his legs, which is kind of hard probably to see, 
is um, straps and like tie offs. Those are actually khaki colored. So we're going to do a lot of that kind of like painting on here. And we're going to do it for the entire squad. If you haven't noticed, I have two medium machine gun bases. I have some crew for a Jeep that I'm doing. Then I also have uh, a lieutenant model, mortar team, light mortar, airborne light mortar, and a medic. So yeah, I have two machine gun bases, and this will finish most of my um, uh, airborne American stuff. Uh, and at the end of the video, I'll have pictures of what they all look like finished up close. Because even with this camera I'm using right now, like the overhead camera, you don't get really good detail. So let's start painting up on this stuff. And what's nice is like, it's pretty simple. You can do two coats on this as well, okay? And like a lot of stuff is just khaki colored. So we're gonna go ahead and just get the painting on it. Oh my God, we're gonna, you can paint a lot of this pretty close. Now, I, as you can see, I'm holding this real far, I'm actually holding this kind of far away from my face. I paint a little bit closer. So I'm just doing this for the camera and for you guys. I'm doing this for Yens, which is you all in Pennsylvania talk. And whenever we talk about up here, this would be a dry brush. That'll be one of the last things we do in the model. If you want models to look really good, you start at the bottom and work your way up and Obviously, you have way more detail around the head. That's what you want so people can see. And I'm just painting stuff up. Now, the reason we haven't washed the boots yet, because, let me get this khaki done, and we'll go over that next. What we've done, we've gone through, like, all the guys, and we've painted the boots and uh, the holsters a lot light brown, which I showed you earlier. And then we painted all the... You can see on his legs, the look stripes. That stuff tied off usually, like the, for their knife. So we paint all those khaki. Damn phone in the background, and all the like the pouches and web gear that khaki color, which again is seventy point nine nine eight. And then what we're gonna do? Obviously, some of this stuff like we'll take uh, our olive drab and we'll touch up the model to where like it washed out over especially on the straps then once we're done doing that the boots the holster and the khaki itself we're going to go ahead and do a pretty decent liberal wash of uh reichland flesh shade i like this because it gives a little bit of like a red tinge to it which will like it makes the it makes the khaki pop more i feel like that red like like a burgundy color and then once we seal the model with uh, our sealer which I'll show at the end it helps tone everything down kind of ties it together so I want to go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and touch up these guys uh, here for you and then we'll start applying wash now you can apply the wash now and then the final step as you're going through the model you could touch up your uh, little spillage is over it's really up to you uh, sometimes I like just doing that first to get everything all tidy so that way whenever I go back and wash everything's in. wow my phone's going ballistic figure as soon as I start filming I have like kind of bad service where I'm at he wants to start doing stuff <laughs> so uh, another thing I kind of forgot to mention for a lot of the boots for the bottom of the boots um, I'll usually say just paint that straight black I will go ahead and I will use the black gray. I think I've gone over this in this video or another one. I like this because like it gives a gray tinge to the black. Like if you almost uh, went and did like a dry brush or highlight, and it looks like rubber really well, like rubber tires, hoses. Like if anyone's ever seen like your rubber tire or like rubber stuff, how it has that like kind of a gray hue to it this stuff will do it and that is black gray 7086.2 uh, like I said whenever this video will post I'll have all this kind of stuff in the description actually I might just go ahead and wash these for you guys instead of me like touching them up because I might just do like a, 
a rough thing. The other thing is too, whenever I do a lot of these paintings, uh, I do a lot of washes, and I'll do different washes. I'll do, like I said, the shades and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I factor that into my uh, painting time. So if I like, I'm like today, I'm getting ready to leave. I'm gonna go to the gym. Yes, I, I try to go there whenever I can. And then tonight's magic night at the shop. It's Friday. Uh, this is like a couple of days I'm making this video whenever I can. I've been super busy. So uh, I'll probably want to go there and play magic tonight. So play some commander. So I could just wash these before I go. And then they'll dry. And by the time I come back later in the day before I go to work, I can go ahead and start touching some stuff up. The, the wash will be dry by then. So let's just go ahead and make, up your sh make sure you shake up your wash. Okay. And I know these pots aren't the best. You know what I mean? A lot of people complain about them, and, and I get it. Uh, but yeah, just you're just applying a little bit of wash over those surfaces. And if it gets onto the khaki, no big deal. Uh, now, for like the brown that you're doing, the, like the holster and the boots, you might need to put like two, uh, apply it twice onto there. And again, I'm doing this like really far away from my face. Usually it's like a lot closer to me. Uh, luckily, I don't wear glasses yet. But uh, I'm doing this so you guys can see it better on camera. And you just, just apply your wash. And like I said, even if it gets on the khaki or on the uh, OD, it's not that big a deal. And you're, you're just adding a little bit of a shading to it that otherwise it would not have. And then there's ways to do shade, but let's be honest, if uh, you're painting, because generally this squad, a 10-man squad, now this is a lot of different special stuff as you see, I could usually pay a 10-man squad within a week. And that's me, honestly, a little bit here, a little bit there, that's not a week's worth of hours, that's just a week of time, like painting a little bit here, painting a little bit there. Now I know with drying and stuff like that, if I would just paint it and let it dry, I'm, I would probably get this stuff knocked out in, I would think, an eight-hour period. Uh, I keep, I paint in my basement right now. Uh, it's it's super hot up in my attic. I used to paint up there, and it, it kind of gets rough up there. Wow, phone. And only because of uh, how hot it is. As you can see, it just looks a little bit of wet. Now, it's shiny right now because it's wet. But as you see, what's well, done the khaki, and me hold up a uh, guy the similar. Let me put this down. As you can see, like it's really it really changes the color a little bit. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna do all these guys up real quick. I figure that's that's the next step. Once you're done doing that, apply your wash. And then the next part will go into uh, a lot of it's just fine detailing stuff. So, like painting weapons. And, like I said, this is real easy. I'm trying to do it in like little, like bite sized pieces. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to wash these guys and then I actually have to get going. So, these guys, I, I touched them up, I washed them, they're dry. And I went back through and I touched up any of the the green or the uh, olive drab. So next we have to go what color we're going to do next. So looking at these guys, there's all kinds of colors left. There's face, there's the helmet, stuff like that. So what's next, honestly, is going to be any rifles. So rifles, uh, submachine guns, like uh, all these guys are Ozzy Armour Thompsons. So they have a wooden foregrip, uh, pistol stock. And buttstock. So, what I'm going to do for that, my next color I'm going to be using, I'm going to use just flat earth, just a regular brown. Uh, it's going to be, if you guys want the number, 70.983. So, I like it, it's just a standard brown. Uh, you get a ton of it. I'll mix it up here. So, what I'll do is I'll paint the entire rifle brown first. Once it dries, I'm going to have to do a second coat. Then I go next with uh, gunmetal gray. So this is a black with like metal flakes in it. 
<coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> I'll cut that out. So the, the next thing besides the brown is gunmetal gray. So this is 70863. So it's black with like metal flakes in it. It looks really good. Although you do have to shake it up quite a bit. And it almost gives it the metal a, or it gives a black sheen to it, almost like it's oiled. Because a lot of weapons, especially at this time, are parkerized, which is like a gray finish, or they're just like blue, like black, like a blue-black finish. And then, obviously, if it's oiled up, it'll have like a little bit of like a, a sheen to it. So, I'll use this for the metal bits, like the weapon bands, made trigger guard, the actual mechanism, like where the charging handle is barrels tip of the barrel stuff like that and that'll be what goes on next so let's go ahead i'm going to go ahead and grab this brown shook it up a little bit and you can see my painting palette just an old lid i think this lid was uh held as su 57 zeus's so just a little bit and then i'll basically go through and just do all the rifles there's not too many on this group of guys honestly because these are mostly support weapons so there's one or two. So actually I probably put more than I need. I'll paint all those up. I'll do the Thompsons, which I don't think there's any Thompsons in this group actually. And then once that's dry, I'll go back through and I'll touch it up with uh, gun metal. And then I'll show you what that looks like. You'll probably see that more come into effect with the actual machine guns. So like they're a little 30 cal with I think it's 1919. So like, you can paint the tripod that as well as this uh yeah, then his pistol you could probably paint like the, the foregrip they have 45s which was parkerized with wood you could go in there and paint a little bit of wood but honestly there's very little of the hand grip sticking out of these so i just leave it uh gun metal and call it a day and usually i don't treat the gun metal. i don't wash it or anything i used to take and uh, hit it with uh black and then hit it with like a dry brush of silver and that works for some items especially stuff with aluminum like a lot of my german stuff that has like backpacks or like the gas can canisters they call it like a bread box uh those were aluminum so and they were painted and obviously through like anyone's been in the service or messing with stuff knows paint chips gets wore off and then you see the aluminum underneath like the shininess underneath that's what gives you a little bit of that look so i'm gonna go ahead and start painting these guys uh, oh, oh, almost forgot. That brown also will be for e-tool handles or like uh, entrenching tools. Okay. Once we do that and we paint uh, the brown, we'll hit that with Erg Shad. Okay. But you'll also really brown it down some more and sometimes gives it like a more of a dirtier look, which is what you want. So let me do that and then I'll be back. So I painted up... Uh, Honestly, a handful of rifles and a little bit of uh, entrenching tools. And that's that, really. I'll let those dry, and then I'll wash those, like I said, with Earthshade. Earth so right now, I also took the time, and I put uh, black gray on the heel, on the soles of the shoes, of the boots. Uh, and now I'm just going to go ahead and go in and probably take I'll paint the mortar so I want to say that is going to end up reaching in my bag of goodies here so nope all drab base no brownish green might I think I'll end up taking for it because like stuff wasn't standardized so I'm probably going to end up taking uh, Reflective Green. It's a little bit darker, and I'll use that uh, to paint the mortar that you see here. It's a light mortar, so it's basically a 60 millimeter mortar. Uh, we still use 60 millimeter mortars to this day, not this particular one. But uh, we'll paint it up real quick. Uh, it's in one way it's probably, it might be a lighter color than this green I'm using but like I said a lot of times uh, there was no I guess standardization you could say so what I'll do is I'll I'll paint this that dark green the reflective green 
then when it dries I'll take the brownish green from AK and I will do a dry brush of that over top of it so it makes like the parts of war stuff like that for for live mortar rounds and stuff like that I'll use a, that uh, brownish green a lot of times it works good for like ordnance colors grenades uh, unlike other uh, hobby games the guys aren't really bassoon with all kinds of weapons so I'll use AK colors uh, brownish gray or blast green I'll use it as a dry brush for that as well as a dry brush for the airborne recce jeep I'm doing off to the side as well I picked this up these are hard to get right now so I washed it earlier did a little bit of stuff to it this will be a more in-depth thing because there's a ton of stuff happening on this Jeep but I'll use that brownish green uh, something that you pick up for vehicles especially I don't know how well they air brush the all the US all drab complete set uh, it's really good especially for vehicles it has the internal paint like if you ever been in a military vehicle for US it's like that off really light yellow green interior they have and then they have all the other ones and it works really good so some of you may see my other project on the table it's conflict 47 we're trying to get going too got a little locust these things are chunky also on the table behind it is a sherman from uh old glory miniatures uh, I like their stuff. Some of it's kind of rough, you know what I mean. They're old. Their molds are old. A little bit of paint and a little bit of uh, time, and they look really good. Uh, I have a steward I painted up of theirs. Off the post a picture up. It looks really good. So uh, I got the mortar painted. Let that dry, and I guess I can start uh, doing this metallic metal or the uh, gunmetal gray. Remember, shake it up really good because it's got like, I wouldn't say metal flakes, but it's got like that patina of metal in it. It's a little bit runnier than a lot of their other paints. And you don't need much. The reason I have so much because I will be painting the 30 cows, so that's going to take a lot of that up. So let's do them first. Okay. And I'm painting the tripod as well as the actual weapon itself because it was also parkerized. Uh, they weren't they weren't blued like a lot of the metal was uh, kind of a fun fact before I turn this camera off when I was in Iraq in 05 uh, I was PA National Guard and we had a 50 cal that had US Navy stamped on the side crossed out and then the US Navy it's in 1944 US Navy and then they must have sold to the National Guard. They still had wooden grips. And I remember uh, they had to go through all their inventory because obviously we had old stuff. I also carried around a pig in uh, Iraq for a few months. The old M60. We still had those in our inventory. And uh, I carried in a few missions, which is pretty awesome. Not many people can say that. You know what I mean? Because uh, I was a heavy machine gunner for uh, our unit. But anyway, uh, we had to replace the wooden grips with plastic ones because they could absorb chemicals and I'm thinking like if they get hit with chemicals now like here's some real bad stuff just hit the fan so I went and painted that I'll let that dry I don't know if you guys can see it it looks kind of wet obviously because I've just painted it I gotta get I'm trying to like lighten the soften the light for you guys but the same token it's not working I almost feel like I have too much stuff here it's shiny I need to sit down one day and really go through my table and like take away the shiny stuff so it doesn't reflect back up in the camera uh, but yeah that's what I'm going to do right now I'm going to paint those uh, which is not very much metal uh, probably paint the shells next these guys are almost done in all reality that's pretty quick most of this video I'm talking so alright guys I'm going to go ahead and paint these and uh, we'll see what happens so I'm uh, going to use this brown so let's cool with this brown wash some equipment like ammo cans and stuff like that were that green color uh, Not so much today. They're more of a darker green color so it looks almost like a, a a Puke or like a sickness color so and I do have a couple ammo cans held by 
the AGs. So just a little bit extra detail and just put a little bit of paint on them. And it's bright enough to where it gives it like a, not so much a pop, but it's, it's bright. So we'll paint those two. Dude's holding it. I'm about to go back through and touch it up where his hand's holding uh, the thing, which is okay. So let's do the other one. And I do have a spare ammo can laying around. So I made another guy for the base, and he's just he just carrying an ammo can because that's what he does. Like he's going to have it open. And then, like I said, I'm going to use a little bit to kind of dry brush that mortar. And this can be a little bit goofy because it's not hooked to anything. So it's going to be actually, why am I doing it hard for? I have tools. We have the technology, guys. So, I know people are screaming in the comments, there's other easier ways to do that. And you're probably right, but I'm not smart. I have an animal culling, is what I tell people. And they're like, huh? I said, yeah, just, just go with it. And then that's that. I'll put that here to kind of dry. That's pain, that's pain. So let's, we'll take in, we'll wipe this off. And we'll kind of do a light dry brush on the mortar. Oh, yeah. So, it just gives a little bit of a, a, a war hewn, so to speak. You can see that. It's a little more. It's very subtle, okay? Now his round, I'll paint while I have it out. Uh, in my phone again. It seems like a thing never goes off unless I'm doing stuff and you guys are around. Now the tip of these was usually aluminum or a silver color. So I'll just do this for right now. It's probably not historically accurate, but it's going to be close. And then, dude, you're pulling around out. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll do some research tonight. So, I was a mortarman by trade in the military. Okay, so I might have mentioned that before on the channel. and That's why I always have mortars in all my lists. Any army I can play that has a mortar, I field. Okay. So, he's pulling out of the container. We call it a Tootsie Roll. And the reason is, like, usually it's a cardboard tube, so yay long and as thick as the round. And it's usually wax coated, okay, and you open it top up. Well, they used to have bee wax rounds, so they used to have that Tootsie Roll wrapped in, like, canvas with, like, this much beeswax and, like, resin over it to waterproof and seal the rounds because a lot of the charges and stuff, especially back then in mortar rounds, they are very susceptible to moisture. So, like, they were really, like, waterproofed. Well, those are old. And up until, like, I got out in 2018. Oh, watch these tips off. 2018, uh, we were still shoot those 81s and 60s at times. I never come across any 120s. But then again, at that time frame, uh, our large heavy mortar was a 4 dot deuce, which was 4 inch, 4.2 inches. And it was rifled. I think we went to 120s in the 80s or 90s, and uh, so we never, I never had to do with like giant tootsies like that. 81s and 60s I have, so that's painted. That's painted. Uh, I'm gonna do some stuff off the side, some other project stuff I'm doing. I might work on this Jeep a little bit more while that's kind of drying, and then what I'll do is I'll go back through. And the next part is I will touch up the rifles and then wash them. And then really the only parts we have left on the guys are faces and hands. And then the final step I do 
A lot of the airborne in Normandy, they reinforce their uniforms. That's why you see like the green patches on the elbows and the knees and stuff. They took old uniforms of whatever material and they reinforced those part, ports they sewed patches on. So that'll be one of the last parts I do. I'll take like a, a flat green or something like brighter green. I want to say I'll use US dark green. That'll probably be nice and bright. Uh, or flat green. I think I use flat green actually. Uh, which I'll, I'll go over and I just paint those patches. And for guys that don't have like the outlines of patches, just paint a rough square over the elbow and over the knee area. And boom, you're done. Like it gives you a little splash of color that's historically close because they, all kind, they use all kinds of materials for the patches, but they always show green. So let me go ahead and mess with these guys some more. And uh, I'll work with the rifles. I'll probably work with these belts of ammo. I'll paint those. Like, first, I'll paint them copper, and then I will paint them uh, gold or bronze. And then I will wash those with. Uh, 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 of all things, uh, Reckling Flesh Shade. All right, let me get back to it. I just went and I, uh, I took the machine guns. I did the first, I, I painted like the ammo cans. What I'll do with the ammo cans, I'll hit that with a wash of Urshad uh, Reckland Flesh Wash. The first time I paint like cartridges, I paint the first coat copper. Uh, that's just standard. Where's that? GW uh, harsher copper layer. I like it actually. It's a really good one. And then I will paint it again with uh, Vallejo's Glor or Glorious Gold, which is really good and bright. It's bright. Uh, and then once that's on there, I will wash it. I like this flesh wash. Reichling Flesh Wash. It gives like an orange or like a red patina. So I'll use that to wash that as well as uh, the ammo cans. Like the that uh, kind of puke brownish green ammo cans. Uh, so I washed the rifles, the ones I have, and I've washed the uh, E-Tools. They're drying. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let them dry for a while. Uh, it's getting close to time for me to do work, get ready for work. And I'm going to try to adjust this light situation because, like, I'm trying to, like, get rid of the sheen that reflects back to you guys. I think I'm going to, like, clean a lot of this stuff up. I really should clean my painting area up. And people probably going crazy on the screen. Or are they doing a scavenger hunt? Like, what can we see on his desk of wonders? You know what I mean? Because I know a lot of people uh, like, are seeing different things. So... Uh, if there's anything on the desk that you see that like you want to talk about, go ahead and like just comment. You know what I mean? We'll talk about it. But uh, next time they come back, I will probably be going into uh, finishing the, the magazine belt, or the the bullet belts for the machine guns, as well as starting to do flesh. So the airborne guys have these big like jump gloves, like real thick like leather gloves. Or just their bare hands. You'll be surprised the what I use to do to get the flesh color that I like. I like. So that'll probably be the next thing. And honestly, that almost wraps up the video because these guys will be really close to being done. So all right, guys. Till next time. I'm almost done with this, guys. We're wrapping it up. So I've went through. I've painted uh, the belts of ammo. Uh, I said first I do a layer of copper. Then I do a thing of gold. Then I, I uh, hit it with Ruckland Flesh. And then I dig a little strip of uh, for the ammo belt. These guys are almost done. The last thing we're gonna do, one of the last things we do for these guys, we're gonna paint the flesh of the faces and everything. And then there'll be some brown from like the web gear around the helmet. And one of the last steps will be the patches. So what I do for flesh, believe it or not, I like using this stuff because I can mess with it a little bit. As I use like a flesh colored paint, crap, old apple barrel. This one's light mocha. And I like using it uh, since I don't have a lot of flesh to paint with these guys. I don't mind using that paint. Now if I'm doing say like uh, really like naked like tribesmen and stuff, 
I'll use an actual paint. Like I've used um, Vallejo Flesh before, but since I'm doing like hands and faces, I don't mind using that. Last well, thing's like really jerky with uh, the things today. I don't mind using that because then what I do is I'll use Reckland Flesh Wash as my medium or as my uh, paint. Okay, so yeah, I'll just go ahead and I'll start painting up on these. And then really the last two things to do is I'll use flat green, which is 968, to paint the patches. And then I'll take the khaki and I'll dry brush the helmets with all like the web gear and stuff on top. So that way it gives that look. And then it's just basing the model, which I'll go over at the very end. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start painting these faces up, wash them in the hands. One guy has gloves on, which when I paint the gloves, I use a dark sand, and that is 8470. And then for the gloves, I'll also wash them in Reichlin Flesh Wash. Like I said, the only, only guy with it is the one Mortarman with gloves, which is funny because we're taught as Mortarman uh, when you're handling live rounds and dropping them, no rings, and you don't wear gloves. So this guy must not got the memo. So. All right, let me paint some of this a little bit here. And uh, the thing's real jerky. I'm hoping this actually records really good. I don't know why it's being real slow today. So we'll just we'll just paint on some th this flesh, and it's just like one coat. Now, as far as eyes go, I'm not really good at painting eyes, guys. So a lot of times I'll put enough uh, wash or shade in there that I just darken the eye sockets to where it's like leaves a shadow in there. Other folks can paint eyes. I'm not really good at it. Now if I have sci-fi eyes like an alien or Bosk, I gotta bring him up because I've done his eyes, some other stuff. I don't mind. I'll paint those. It's not too awful bad. So let me finish this up, and uh, when I come back, I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Uh, these guys are almost done in all reality. So I'll have all my stuff done for any major event coming up. Also, at the time of this section of the video, we have one more spot left open in our 10-man uh, event. So, get out of here, bug. So if... Um, you're seeing this, hopefully we'll have a video of us playing tomorrow at the shop and we'll also have a video of the actual event. Alright guys, I'm going to paint some here and uh, we'll be back. Okay, it's all really dragging this time. So, I'm pretty much done with these guys. So, I've gone through and I've hit them with flesh wash. So, uh, regular flesh wash, I usually hit it once, do a real light dry brush and hit it again. And, like I said, I don't really want paint eyes, so I fill it in to where, like, once these are sealed, it's, uh, they do a pretty good job of doing, uh, like, faces, basically. For, especially for tabletop, like, your, like, the three foot rule applies. I'm painting the Jeep at the same time, but that's going to be not part of this video. Next is going to be this stud missile launcher. Uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, I did the gloves. Like I said, that was actually with dark sand. And I washed it with wrinkle flush wash too. And as you can see, it really makes the gloves look pop. And as you say, like with the khaki, that's wrinkle flush wash too. And that's what's done with the khaki. Gives it like a little bit of a tone down. So the only thing I have left to do on these models particularly, once everything's dry, I will take regular khaki and I will do a dry brush of the helmets. So they, they have all like that webbing and stuff on there. And uh, I won't, I'll just do a dry brush, but I won't wash it. And also like the medic, I'll, I'll uh, put some more white on his armband and then paint the red cross there. And that's really it. What are you doing, Buck? My dog's running around. There's a, he's, he's, there's like 
I'm in my basement and we have apparently a mouse or two and he's chasing them. Uh, I'll have to tell you that one night. But yeah, and all I have to do really is I'll go ahead and I'll use this khaki. I'll dry brush the helmets. And then also what I'll do is I'll take the khaki and I'll paint the rim of all the bases first. And then once that's done and dried, I'll, I'll take the epoxy, I'll mount the machine gun crews onto their bases. And literally, uh, I'll probably I'll take some wood glue, which I'll use, Gorilla Wood Glue, as well as just some scrag grass. You see how old that is. I've had this for a long time. Uh, do some static grass, maybe some grass tufts. If I felt like I put some debris on, I usually just put grass and some tufts on and call it a day. So, yeah, let me go ahead and start dry brushing these helmets. And that's really it. And then the next time you see these models, they're going to actually be... Um, plus, too, I can use this khaki leftover khaki to paint the rim of uh, the bases. But yeah, next time you see these guys, I'll have to do this one. My dry brush, dr brush. Next time you see them, they will be, um, they'll be done. As you see that, it kind of makes the helmet pop a little bit. It's hard to see. I have my camera. But it leaves it a green tinge with a little thing of that uh, that color. Doesn't take much. Just a couple, just a couple quick swipes, and it's fairly done. Like I said, it looks a couple swipes and you're done. And as you know, the dry brush. Here, I'll show you. So, like, this is before. Boom. And believe it or not, that makes them guys pop so much. It's, it's just so little. I always like to say it's a splash of paint. You're adding a, a, a splash of paint for that illusion of depth. Is all you're doing. That's all you really want to do. And it doesn't take much, as you can see. Like I have, I'm doing a whole lot of dry brushing with very little paint on my brush. It's just enough to leave that color behind, where it's noticeable on the helmet. And and you could dry brush it more heavily, and leave more of a. A, a tan color behind. I like having that little bit of a tan color, but still a green through it. And that's just me. And it looks pretty close to accurate. Then what's going to happen? Like you see, a lot of these guys are kind of shiny still from the washes. Whenever I seal these guys, now it's getting late in the year, so it's probably one of the last months that I actually start sealing models. Uh, which uh, I use, uh, I'll show you at the end of this video, what I use to seal models with. And um, yeah, it works really well. It really does. All right, so I'll finish this up real quick. And uh, we'll, I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so this is the finished product. I'm going to use my phone for this. So once I uh, paint on the green, from dudes they go on the knee pads and elbow pads and stuff I took and I I uh, use white glue and some regular old flock and a few grass tufts here or there uh, to seal the models I first hit them with uh, Vallejo acrylic matte finish <sighs> the problem with this stuff is it bubbles when it comes out no matter what you do and uh It'll leave like a white, it'll make the finish look foggy until it fully dries, so it kind of worries you. 
So I'll spray this on while it's still kind of wet. Or I'll spray this on first. And then when this is still kind of wet, I'll hit it with a Tamiyo color. In this case, I use their flat clear TS80. Uh, this stuff really dulls them down. I like it a lot. And you see the, the final product is like really good. Like it ends up just dulling down everything. So like how a lot of times washes, even if you're using like non-gloss washes, it'll leave a gloss. Yeah, it'll, uh, this gets rid of that really well. See my little, like, actually a Jeep, which wasn't part of this painting. Let me get Duder here. So. So, like, yeah, it, uh, come on, focus on him. It's gonna be a hard time focusing. But, uh, yeah, like, just a little bit of, uh, washes, colors. And that's what they look like, guys. Like, they come out really good. Uh, like I said, they're really close to, like, probably correct colors. But they're, everything's a little bit different. The one thing you're going to find in inventories of all over the world, military-wise, is um, stuff fades over time. Or stuff's just not the exact color you think it is. You know what I mean? But, yeah, that's the rough and dirty how to paint U.S. Airborne. Uh, like I said... The Jeep, I, I should have done a video on, but I just want to kind of want to get it. I want to get it done. The next video I'll be doing is that Scud launcher over there. The correct terminology is Scud B or the Tazerl. But yeah, so I got a, a little light mortar team done. Another officer. I'll probably make use him as a captain, maybe medic, and then uh, two more uh, medium machine gun bases. Um, I'm doing my U.S. Airborne. I'm going to actually probably run three bases of machine guns. And I know some people are like, oh, they're not very good. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to run them. Uh, but, yeah, hope you like it. And I'll have a link in the description. Oh, I'll have in the description what colors I used, like all the washes and everything. And, oh, one more side note. When you're flocking these, so I end up using, like I said, I use that metal, or I use a uh, gunmetal black. So what ends up happening is, obviously when you, when you flock it, a lot of times a uh, flock will stick to that. So you just take a, a brush, and you just kind of brush it off. Yeah, look, I like how they turned out pretty good. You know what I mean? So, all right, guys. Until next time, peace.